وبركاته وعليكم السلام الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر In Alhamdulillah, verily all praise belongs to Allah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. We praise Him, we praise Him alone, we seek His help and ask for His forgiveness. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil that is within our own souls and our sinful actions. Man yahdi Allahu fala mudillala wa man yudlil fala hadiyala. Whomsoever Allah guides to this beautiful religion of Islam cannot be misguided. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, cannot be guided. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. And I bear witness that there is no deity except Allah that is worthy of worship. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. Ya ayuha alladheena amanu taqu allaha haqa tukati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah as is his right to be feared and do not die. Except but as a Muslim. Ya ayuhan nasu taku rabakum uladhi khalakakum min nafsin wahida. Wa khalaka minha zawjaha wa bathu minhumi rijalin kathiran wa nisaa. Wa taku allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi war arham. Kanna allahu, kanna, in allah kanna alaykum raqiba. O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and from that soul its mate. And from those two the rest of progeny and fear Allah from whom you demand your mutual rights through the ties of kinship and give reverence to the arham, the womb that bore you. For Allah indeed sees everything that you do. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sudeeda yuslih lakum amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dunubakum wa ma yuti allaha wa rasuluhu faqad faza fawzan azeema amma ba'd. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, and always say that which needs to be said and speak the truth. For by doing so, Allah will guide you to righteous actions and forgive you of your sins. And whomsoever has obeyed Allah and his last messenger has indeed already achieved the greatest achievement. 
Indeed, the truest speech is the book of Allah. والخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the best guidance, the best example is the example of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. والشراء الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. And the worst of actions are those who are put into the religion things which Allah nor His Messenger legislated. And every one of those things is a deviation, is a bid'ah. And every deviation is a misguidance. And every misguidance finds itself in the fire. Al Yawm al Akhir, the last day. My brothers and sisters, what I want to talk to you about today is the very last day. This world, since its inception, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the concept of time, since mankind has been marking time, we've been counting days, we've been watching the sun as it goes from one side of the sky to the other, and the moon as it comes and it waxes and it wanes, counting the calendars, the months and the years. All of this is leading towards the very last day. The entire universe, everything is, that is in it, all of the cosmos is racing and barreling towards one final day. One final day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to as Yawm al as the great day, the greatest day, the last and the greatest day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about it in the Quran, After nasi hasabahum wa hum fi ghaflatin mu'ridun. That drawing to mankind is coming close to the day. The nearness to the day is coming to them. Their reckoning, their hisab, their account is coming. It's racing towards them. While most of them, while most of them turn away from it in heedlessness. Allah is reminding us that it, it is an hour we are racing towards. Our reckoning, our hisab, our accounting, everything that we've ever done in our life is racing towards us while we are turning away from it in a state of ghafla, in a state of heedlessness, negligent, not even recognizing it, not even recognizing it. That is the worst part about it, is that it is racing towards us while we are heedless, heedless of it. Ibn Hajr, rahimullah, in his Fathul Bari, he relates that Imam Qutrubi, in his tafsir, says that the Verses that Allah speaks about the Quran, about the Day of Judgment. The account that he numbered is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given 50 names to the Day of Judgment. 50 different phraseologies and names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used for the Day of Judgment. And I just want to talk about 10 of them today. 10 of them and what they mean and what their impact is. To remind us that yes, we live for today. You maybe you're planning for tomorrow. Maybe you have plans for next week and next year, and we, which we should. But none of that is guaranteed. None of it. No, you're not guaranteed a moment in this life. None of it. Any one of us, myself, if Allah has willed for me not to make it back home after this khutbah, that is the end for me. But one day that I can guarantee you that every human being will witness, and it is one of the names of the Day of Judgment, which we're not talking about in these sin, but it is called the Day That Is Witnessed. Yawm lo shuhada. The day that will be witnessed by everybody is the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, He praises Himself and He says, Surely I will gather you together illa al-yawm al-qiyamah. This is one of the names that Allah has given the day of judgment. Yawm al-qiyamah. The day where they will be standing. The day where they will be resurrected and standing up. And Allah says about it, There is no doubt in this. This day of standing, there is no doubt in it. It is a surety. And then Allah says and follows it up. And who is more true in his speech? Who is more true in his speech than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah tells us that this is a day, there is no doubt, the day you will stand. And the Prophet wasallam said this standing will be equivalent to 50,000 years. 50,000 years is the length of this standing. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, they, they will be asked, how long? How long have we stayed? Was it a day, a part of a day? And those with knowledge will say, you stayed but, but an hour. Because the longevity of the akhirah is so large, that this world will look so small. It'll look like we were here for just a moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also calls the day of judgment, 
Asa'ah, the hour, the appointed time, as the Prophet, all of the Prophets were asked to question, Matasa'ah, when is the hour? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al 15 that, and we have not created the heavens and earth and that which is in between them, but in truth. So the hour is coming. The hour, the hour, the appointed time is coming. And the scholars have said that Allah calls it a sa'a because it has an appointed point. There is a time Allah has, subhanahu wa ta'ala has already legislated that is known to Him and Him alone. Dhul Jilali wal Ikram, that that day will commence. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he ascended into the heavens, when he witnessed the things that are in the realm that we, you and I cannot see, he said, I saw Israfil, the one who blows the trumpet. I saw him and he was standing with the horn to his lips, his eyes fixed on the throne of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He had already taken his breath and he is waiting patiently for Allah to give him the order to blow that horn. The Prophet Sallallahu said that the time between my Ummah and the Day of Judgment is like the time between Asr and Maghrib. It's like the time between Asr and Sunset. He Sallallahu said, I am the forecomer of the Day of Judgment. I am the first sign of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It is close, it is near. It is always drawing closer and closer to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the day of judgment as Yawmul Ba'ath. Yawmul Ba'ath, the day when we will bring them out, the day when we will resurrect them, the day when they will come out of their graves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Hajj, O oh mankind, if you should be in doubt about the resurrection, if you are in doubt about Yawmul Ba'ath, if you are in doubt about the day when we will put you back together and bring you back out of the ground, then remember we created you from dust. This was said to the Meccans that if you're in doubt, if you don't think that I can bring you about again after you have died and turned to dust and bones in the grave, then remember, I created all of you, every single one of you from dirt. So this day is a reality. It is coming. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also refers to the day of judgment as Yawm al khuruj the day where they will be brought forward, the day where they will be brought out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that when they hear the blast in truth, that this is indeed the day of coming out. When they hear the blast of truth, Allah says in Surah Tuqaf, that that's indeed this is the day when they will come out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the day of judgment as Al Qariyah. We all know the very short surah Al Qariyah to Mal Qariyah, Wama Adraka Mal Qariyah, Yoma Yukunu Nasu Kal Farash Il Mabatuth, and on and on and on. And the reason why the scholars say that Allah refers to it as Qariyah is that it will strike in a terroring way. That when that day comes, it will strike every single heart that Allah has created, from the best of His creation to the least of His creation. It will strike terror and fear in their hearts. This scene that we will see has been described in so many ways. But this is a scene that you cannot imagine. No film director has ever been able to put together a scene that can actually properly depict what we will witness when that day comes, when that trumpet is blown for the second time and all of mankind comes out of their graves, the horrors that we will witness, the sky that is above us now is cracking into pieces. It is cracking into pieces and falling apart. The stars are falling out of their places. The, the mountains of the earth are moving across it like waves of the ocean. It is being flattened. Everything is going madness at this moment. The oceans are being set on fire. They're ablaze. The sun is drawing near to us. This day is going to be a day like no other day. It is Yawm al Adim, the greatest day. It is Al Qariya. It is a day that will strike terror and fear into every heart. Not just the hearts of those who disbelieved or the hearts of those who are sinful or wrong. All of us, even the Anbiya on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be so angry on that day 
There's a hadith recorded in Bukhari that mankind will be running around asking and begging for anyone to tell Allah to just get this day of judgment started and over with. We'll go to Adam alayhi salam and he will say, I am afraid of Allah today. Allah is angry today. He has never been this angry before. He will never be this angry again. I disobeyed my Lord in the garden. I cannot help you. We will go to Musa. He'll say the same thing. Allah has never been this angry. Nor will he ever be this angry again. Go to someone else. Go to Ibrahim. Ibrahim will say the same thing. He will say, go to Isa. On and on and on. They will all just say the same thing. That Allah is angry today like he has never been. And he will never be like this ever again. I am worried about myself. Nafsi, nafsi. I can't help you. This is al qariah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also refers to the day of judgment as Yawmul Fasl. Yawmul Fasl, um, the day of decision. The day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the deciding matter for every single affair that has ever happened in the heavens. Every single wrong will be righted. Every single injustice will be paid for. Every single good deed will be recompensed. There will be nothing left after that day that has not been settled between human beings, between animals, between the jinns, between whatever Allah has created. That is Yawmul Fasl, the day of Allah's decision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hadal Yawmul Fasli, this is the day of decision upon which you used to deny. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says famously in Surah Tunaba, Inna al Yawmul Fasli Qana Miqata. Indeed, this is the day of the decision is in an appointed time. It will come in an appointed time. And then we know famously in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it Yawm al-Din, the day of recompense, the day of reconciliation, the day of paying back, the day where everything will be settled, the day where the, everything will be equated and made equal in the Mizan and all of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also refers to the day of judgment as as the deafening blast. as that it will be a deafening blast. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ السَّاخَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Abasa that but when comes the deafening blast. Some say it's referring to the trumpet that is blown either the first or the second time but it is also a name for the day of judgment itself. Brothers and sisters, this day is a day that is not some far off fairy tale. It is not some far away dream that we might think the day of judgment is so far away why do I need to be concerned about it why do I need to be concerned about it the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam a group of there are a number of narrations very similar to this but a group of people came to him sallallahu alayhi wasallam and said ma tasa'a ya rasulullah when is the hour O messenger of Allah and he looked at the youngest from amongst them. Or he would look at a young man and he would say, If this one, if this one grows up to be of old age, then most of your hours will have already begun. Most of your hours will have already have begun. Because the day of judgment begins for you the moment you meet the angel of death. The moment the angel of death presents himself to you, is the day when your judgment begins. How many times have you been in this community and seen the burials happen, seen the janazas happen, see the coffins get wheeled right here? Those people have already begun the day of their judgment. Their day of judgment has already commenced because there is nothing left for them now. They've punched their ticket in this life and they are into the akhirah. The barzakh has been placed between them and this world. There is nothing else that they can do except wait for that hour. So you might think that the day of judgment is far off. Maybe you're young. Maybe you're in good health. Maybe you feel like you have your whole life ahead of you. And the day of judgment could be right around the corner. Could be right around the corner for you. Never. This is one of the biggest tricks of shaitan that he beguiles the most of mankind with is the concept of time. Shaitan loves to deceive us into thinking you have time. That is one of his big deceptions for you and me. You have time. Let me tell you, you don't have time. The time that you think you have, you don't have it. It's not promised to you. You don't know. 
So you need to live as if there is no time. You need to live as if there is no time for me left. I have no time to waste. I have no time to flounder. I have no time to be just distracted. I have no time. Trust me, you don't have time. I remember I learned this a very hard lesson when I was 27 years old. My mother, um, I had a very broken relationship with her as a child. If you've seen my domestic violence tapes, you'll understand why. If not, watch them. I don't have time for that. But I had a very broken relationship with her for most of my childhood. We reconnected when I was 23 years old in a, in a, in a, in a profound way. We reconnected when I was 23. And I wanted to spend time and regain that lost time with my mother and guide her to Islam. And I had a plan and I had a schematic of the way I was going to do it. Because I thought I had time, right? thought I had time at that time. When I was 23, my mother was only 40. My mother was only 40 years old. She had me when she was 17, so I'm thinking I have a lot of time. Three years later, three and a half years later, she would die of cancer. That took her very suddenly, what they call these turbo cancers, where she was diagnosed with cancer and she was gone within three months. Gone within three months. And at the very end of me trying to bring her towards Islam, she was on so much pain medication that she really couldn't even recognize the people around her, including myself. And she died in my arms when I was 27 and she was 44. And I learned a very hard lesson that you don't have the time you think you have. Especially when it comes to people. When it comes to people, the loved ones in your life. The people that you've broken relationships with, the people that you've cut relationships with, the people that you've argued with, the people that you have issues with, and you think you have time to resolve these things, or one day these matters will solve themselves. You don't have that time. You don't have that time, and that is one of the biggest regrets we will have on the day of judgment is that the things that we did not sort out. The things that we didn't sort out in this life that we now have to go in front of Allah on the day of judgment looking like a bunch of fools sorting out our affairs over the meagly matters of this world because we decided our egos were too big to deal with one another. It was too much of a, a, an, a slight, too much of an insult to deal with it face to face, brother to brother, man to man, woman to woman, sister to sister, father to son, son to father, whatever it is, settle it. Settle your affairs, settle your matters now. Before you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day and he asks you to settle them. This is another one of the days, names of the day of judgment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he calls it Yawmul Hasr. That it is the day of regret. It is the day of regret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمُ الْحَسْرَةِ and warn them about the day of regret. He tells us to warn, tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, warn them about the day of regret. While they are in a state of heedlessness and they do not believe in it. That is the day where we will regret so many things. So many things we will regret. That will be the day where we will be standing there worrying about our lives and the things we've done and the things that are coming before us. Do not let it be the worst day of our lives. <laughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam Ala Rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Ajma'een Wa man wala ila yawmid deen And last and finally As I started Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Refers to it as Yawm al-akhir It is the last day It is the day after which There will be no more days There will be no more days After this day It is the final day After that which will be one of two factors, one of two people, one of two affairs. After this last day, after this final day, it will be the people of Jannah and it will be the people of Jahannam. It will be the people of belief and it will be the people of disbelief. It will be the people of good and it will be the people of evil. It will be no other way on that day. When the affair is decided and Allah has brought forward the scale and Allah has weighed the matters, the only thing you will care about. I know we have so many concerns in this world right now. We have so many things that are going on. And rightly so, there are things you should be worried and concerned about. There are parts of this ummah that are suffering. There are parts of this ummah that are suffering across the world and suffering right here in our own homes. There are people who are going through it. Yes, we have worries and we have concerns. But on that day, 
these affairs of this world will become minuscule. They will become minor if they do not translate into something that is going to help me be on the side of the people of Jannah on that day. When you are resurrected, you won't care about your father. You won't care about your mother. You won't care about your brothers. You won't care about your sisters. You won't care about your children. You won't care about your, that big house you built. Your money and your... None of it will matter. Except you will be worried. What hand am I going to get my book of deeds in? Which hand is it going to come in? What side of the scale is the mizan going to tip on for me? When I stand in front of Allah and He's going to call us by name one by one, one by one when Allah calls my name is he going to tell me that I am forgiven or not is he going to have mercy on me or not is he going to admit me into Jannah or not that's all that's going to matter that's all that's gonna matter so one of my earliest teachers told me think of your life like that think of your life as if you were now standing on the plane of resurrection and everything that you're doing, ask yourself, is it going to be for or against me on this day? None of us are perfect. We all sin in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we do what we can to make it right. We do what we can to make it right. But he said, think about that day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran that indeed in the Messenger of Allah is uswatun hasana, is the good example to be followed. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَ وَذَكْرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا For those whose hope is with Allah in the very last day. In the very last day. And those who remember Allah greatly. Brothers and sisters, we're barreling towards that day. That day is fast approaching. No matter how long away you think it is, it is barreling towards us very quickly. And we will all meet on that appointed day. And it is the greatest of all days. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our affairs easy on that day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to give be our books given in our right hand on that day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow the mizan to be heavy on our scale of good on that day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow the questioning when we stand before him to be easy on that day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our account to be made heavy for us on that day and our entry into paradise on that day. رَبَّنَا أَتِينَ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَاتِ حَسَنًا وَأَقِينَ ذَابِ النَّارِ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا وَالثَّبَتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرَ الْعَالَ مَقَامِ الْكَافِرِينَ اللَّهُمَّ انْصُرْ إِسْلَامَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ اللَّهُمَّ انْصُرْ وَإِزْ إِسْلَامَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فِي كُلِّ مَكَانٍ يَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ وَأَذِرْ تَشْرِكِ وَمُشْرِكِينَ سُبْحَانَكَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ <تصفيق> الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة وقد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استووا اتعدلوا سووا سوفكم واتراسوا make sure the lines are straight leave no gaps make sure you fill in the line before starting a new one استووا الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين 
آمين بسم الله الرحمن إذا جاء النصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فصبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله Thank you.